There's a couple brand new gaming news stories we have to talk about today, starting with some long dormant and all but forgotten about classic gaming franchises potentially being set for a return to consoles like the Nintendo Switch. Then the big talking point for today's video has to do with multiple summertime June direct presentations from different game companies across the board, as we already know to expect Summer Games Fest and Xbox Plus Bethesda Showcase. And there's a lot of reports that just emerged online suggesting that the roadmap for how companies will handle these direct presentations going forward may have just changed forever. What's up, nation? If it's your first time on the channel, make sure you join Summer Nation by subscribing below, hit the like button on this video if you enjoy it today, and make sure you turn on your bell notification icon so you're kept up to date with all the newest gaming news. Now, as I mentioned, guys, we got a couple different major stories to get through today, and we have to kick it off with a conversation around some long dormant, forgotten about franchises potentially being set for a return, as recently Capcom did hold their quarterly financial briefing that we've seen from numerous different companies and have talked about numerous different times on the channel here, and there were some interesting quotes and takeaways from this exact translation as it definitely sounds like Capcom is open to the idea of revisiting some of these long classic fan favorite games that we maybe haven't seen iterations of in years and years so to quickly get on the same page with exactly what has been said here I do want to quickly hop over to VGC and read through the detailed typed up article together Capcom suggests it could revive some of its dormant game series. The company's first new IP in a decade, Pragmata, is due to release next year. Formed in 1983, Capcom has one of the largest libraries of original IP in all of gaming. However, while blockbuster franchises like Resident Evil continue to receive new iterations as well as remakes of classic games, franchises such as Lost Planet, Power Stone, and Okami haven't seen new entries in many years. When asked specifically what plans the company has for its dormant IP, Capcom responded, we are currently putting together plans for our pipeline based based on demand data for the market. It continued, going forward, we will continue to take customers' wishes into consideration while devising our title lineup. Hideki Kamiya directed Beat'em Up Beautiful Joe last had a new game in 2005. Darkstalkers, a perennially popular fighting game franchise with hardcore fans, hasn't had a new entry, not including remakes or remasters, since 1997. In 2020, Capcom announced Pragmata, its first original franchise in a decade. Pragmata will be Capcom's first completely new IP made for consoles and released worldwide since 2012's Dragon's Dogma. 2016's Megami Maguri was a Japan-only release. So I personally am all for this. I definitely like to see when companies maintain a healthy mix of working on brand new IPs and experimenting with new ideas, new types of gameplay, but then don't totally forget about some of your classic franchises that still have hardcore followings and fan bases and bring them back in the modern era and see how they will succeed. If we saw games like brand new Beautiful Joes, I would be all for that. As the series is just outright fun, the combat is fun and intuitive, and I would like to see it released on something like a Nintendo Switch in the year of 20. 2022 or 2023 ghost and goblins is this another series that i have heavy nostalgia for playing way back in the day we did of course recently get a remaster of that game known as ghost and goblins resurrection which by the way is as hardcore as it has ever been like that game is just downright hard but a ton of fun marvel versus capcom final fight and the big one for me that i don't think we see enough love for with how big of a franchise it is is none other than mega man like we definitely get stretches of time where we do see new mega man releases most recently mega man 11 being the classic version of Mega Man, but taken into, of course, more of a modern graphical style. But I think that we need to have the X series come back as well. Give us some brand new Mega Man X games. And while you're at it, let's finally complete the trilogy of the Mega Man Legends franchise because I grew up playing Mega Man 64, had a ton of fun, then found out that they made a second one only available on the PS2 known as Mega Man Legends 2. And there was originally going to be a third one released and the story arc actually leaves off in a place that we need to know what happens and it never got finished or looked at again. And so if you put in some work to remaster and port over Legends 1 and 2 in a collection pack and then go ahead and give us a brand new iteration of Mega Man Legends 3, I think that franchises like that can definitely survive and thrive in today's market, especially if you push it onto something like a Nintendo Switch where over 100 million plus of those consoles are out there in circulation with active users on there. I think there's a ton of franchises we definitely need to see Capcom focus on. While I do love to see the reboots and remakes of all of the Resident Evil games that they have been working on, I definitely think that they have so many other IPs that they could pour in that same kind of love and treatment for, and then also just get, create brand new sequels that weren't even a thing at all yet for these franchises. I think it makes sense, and I definitely hope we see more of it. I want to hear from you guys in the comments down below, which Capcom franchises, if any, would you be very hyped to see release on the Nintendo Switch in the upcoming years? And regardless of which ones we see make it over or not, what are some of your favorite classic nostalgic Capcom franchises that you still enjoy playing to this day? So I do look forward to hearing from you guys on all things Capcom and the possibility 
possibility of them remastering classic franchises in the comments down below. Now, the other story we're talking about today has to do with multiple gaming companies and how they will hold their direct presentations over the summer, as we do know, of course, that E3 has officially been canceled, both in in-person and digital. And so with that, you have a few companies scheduling their own presentations. So far, the two big ones that we know to be confirmed are Summer Games Fest coming to us from Jeff Keighley and an Xbox plus Bethesda showcase directly from Microsoft. There's also a ton of rumors online that Sony is around the corner from announcing theirs, and I do think that it is a safe bet to still predict that Nintendo will indeed be holding their own direct presentation in the month of June. Recent rumors have suggested that maybe Nintendo is planning multiple smaller direct presentations as opposed to a traditional direct. If I'm a betting man, I still think we see Nintendo do business as usual and hold in the first or second week of June a full-blown direct presentation that outlines the rest of their 2022 games up until September when we will probably learn more about the fall slash winter games. But we need this presentation to happen and Nintendo does doesn't need E3 to put it on. However, one thing that has been very interesting to watch unfold over the years, even when E3 was around, is kind of the lack of content from a lot of the other third-party developers that put on their own showcases, and really a lot of fan letdown at the end of the day with why are these presentations even a thing? And there's a very interesting talking point around this that just popped up from Jeff Keighley directly when asked how his Summer Games Fest would be lining up and whether or not we would see multiple showcases from different third-party partners. And he had some pretty interesting comments around it. So to get on the same page, with what was said, let's quickly hop back to VGC and read through their detailed article together. Jeff Keighley says to expect fewer third-party showcases this summer. The journalist claims many companies will put their content into Summer Games Fest and first-party shows. Last year, companies such as Capcom and Square Enix received a somewhat negative critical response to their own digital events, which fans felt contained fewer announcements than anticipated. Speaking during a Twitter Spaces audio session this weekend, Keighley said consumers should expect less third-party conferences this year, as those publishers with less content instead opt to participate in Summer Games Fest and first-party conferences such as the Xbox and Bethesda Showcase. There were a lot of showcases last year where everyone was disappointed when they weren't really press conferences, right? Like Take-Two, Capcom, Square Enix and things like that, he said. I think they have learned that if you're going to do a press conference, you kind of need to have 30 minutes plus of stuff, and sometimes they only had one or two great games to show, which may not have been enough to do a full event around. Healy added, so I think that's going to be a bit of a shift. I have a pretty good sense of what's coming in the next month, and I think people will be hyped about games in general. There's still a lack of games coming out right now. This is still kind of the COVID gap year, I think, with a lot of games being delayed because they were started during the pandemic. We're still hoping for a lot of things to come out. As previously announced, Summer Games Fest will kick off with a live cross industry showcase on Thursday, June 9th at 11 a.m. PT, 2 p.m. ET, and 7 p.m. BST. It promises to showcase what's next in gaming with huge new game announcements, world premieres, special guests, and much more. So I personally am 100% on board with third parties hopping on the train of being a part of a more mainline presentation that is well structured and well paced as opposed to trying to put together some kind of 30 or 45 event standalone that really only talks about a couple games that sometimes we already knew about because that's what I remember about Capcom and Square Enix's presentations last year is that it just didn't feel like there was anything major new to cover and yet they're up there doing an entire press conference style showcase and it really just didn't work. So I I am hopeful that we will see a little bit more of a consolidation this year. If Summer Games Fest is really going to be here to stay and Jeff Keighley wants to build that into an E3 competitor or ultimately an alternative, depending on what we see happen long term with E3, I think it's very smart from a business standpoint to partner with as many third parties and get their major new trailer and new game announcements just to be a part of that showcase, as opposed to having their own standalone multiple directs that you have to keep up with and multiple presentations that you're not sure when they happen, then you take time out of your day to watch them and you're ultimately underwhelmed at the end of the day. So I am cautiously optimistic that Summer Games Fest will be a great presentation this year and that it will make many improvements from what we've seen so far as it's still really in its infancy as a showcase as a whole. And I hope it feels less Game Awards like and more E3 like, but the good old days of E3, because to be fair, in recent years, E3 has not been the most impressive showcase either. The less small individual showcases and more grand large presentations that are really packed full of new announcements sound a lot better to me personally, and I am hopeful that's the direction we'll see it go. Also, you have to have that conversation of when will Nintendo actually announce their direct presentation. And you know what? This is what I'm going to say. You cannot look forward to a Nintendo announcement until a couple days before it's going to go live. So expect them to announce the direct no more than two days earlier, probably than what the presentation will actually take place at. And that's just how Nintendo does their announcements. So there will be a lot of rumors and speculation online on when they're going to announce it. I definitely still think we're getting a traditional direct in June, but we do have to wait for that official confirmation and 
announcement from Nintendo around what they're planning, and we have a lot of hype games to look forward to if they do end up announcing it, like the heavily rumored Zelda something, regardless of what those games are, and hopefully for me also, the Metroid Prime 1 remake would definitely be probably my most hyped two games that I will be looking forward to in some form when we do hopefully see those revealed, and maybe Nintendo has some surprise cards up their sleeves that nobody's talking about, and some game projects that will be super hyped for fans that we just don't know anything about at this point, so I'm very hopeful for the summertime direct presentations across the board from all the different gaming companies. The month of June traditionally is always legitimately gamers Christmas as there's just so many brand new hype game reveals and I personally can't wait for it. I want to hear from you guys at this point in the video, your personal thoughts on both the stories we talked about today. What classic old Capcom franchises are you hopeful we see brought back in the modern era? And definitely share with me where your hype levels are for presentations like Summer Games Fest. Do you think it's a better decision for third parties to hold less individual showcases and be a part of the bigger showcases or do you think that the business as usual was actually working just fine in your opinion and bonus question share with me when you personally would predict that nintendo will announce their summertime direct presentation if you think we're getting one at all so regardless of your thoughts and feelings on everything we talked about in today's video i do want to hear from you guys in the comments down below before you leave the video as i do look forward to getting a back and forth conversation started with you all around these topics go watch the weekend video next if you haven't already where we discuss some great news for sonic frontiers and the development progression of that game and a very interesting game breaking bug that has indeed been uncovered as part of the most recent Nintendo Switch online update. Also, make sure you like, subscribe, turn on your notification bell, and I will see you guys in the next video.